Hi guys, welcome back to Griffin's Gaming Guides. Today we're going after another Borderlands 3 trophy, Slaughterhouse 3, where you need to complete all the Circles of Slaughter. These Circles of Slaughter are incredibly difficult. I recommend you leave this one until you're at least level 50 and you've got a very good amount tucked away in your Guardian rank as well. Now to make things a little bit easier for these Circles of Slaughter, you can go into them with four players if you can get hold of them. Obviously if you've got friends that are playing Borderlands Online or you jump into a forum or you just jump on social media, whatever way you choose to do it, four of you will make this a damn sight easier. But even just having another person there to revive you will help out massively. If you've already done the Iridium Proving Grounds, this is basically more of the same, but on steroids. These are incredibly difficult. You won't really realise just how tough they are until you actually get in there. So make sure you play this one on normal mode, especially if you're going for it solo. Normal mode, no mayhem modifiers whatsoever. Just play it as low level as you can. The enemies will still scale to end game level. Obviously level 50, 51, 52. Depending on what type of enemy they actually are. And the amount of badass enemies that you come up against, even on normal mode, is insane. Now whether you're playing it solo or with either one, two or three other players in the lobby. Make sure that you bring some very powerful, incendiary, corrosive, shock radiation and cryo weapons with you you need a full house for this one now each circle of slaughter will consist of four waves across five rounds so obviously you need to do 20 waves to be able to complete the circle of slaughter now if you get to say wave four round two and you die you'll then be back at the end of round one the start of round two you won't actually be kicked right back to the very start but you will lose all of that round progress. You'll have to go through the waves again that you've already done. Now first up, we're going for the Circle of Slaughter on Pandora called the Slaughter Shaft. You can access this area just past where you fight Manvark, obviously one of Hammerlock's legendary hunts. As you make your way through this level, take a left before you go through into the final area in Conrad's Hold. You'll see the Slaughter Shaft fast travel point just there. In the Slaughter Shaft, you're going to come up against increasingly difficult waves of bandit enemies. So make sure you bring a strong corrosive and a strong incendiary as a must to even stand a small chance of being able to get through this one. Now, the first few waves and rounds aren't that difficult, but when you get up to rounds 4 and 5, you've got so many badass enemies, it just becomes a bit ridiculous to be honest. The more crowd control weapons you've got, if you manage to find, say, a bear cat, that'll be very good at taking down multiple shields. And then, say, a Skexil, which you could acquire from Scrack, that will deal a lot of kind of area of effect damage as well. You need to, don't take these guys down one on one. You need to kind of deal with them, treat the group as one. The more you, damage you can inflict on multiple enemies, the more chance you're going to have of getting through this. Radiation damage works incredibly well, especially in the latter rounds when you've got so many enemies coming towards you. Obviously, radiation damage always spreads between enemies that are kind of bunched up together. So if you manage to get yourself, even a Wester gun would do the job. Any type of radiation damage you can inflict on those guys will see you, will be a massive, massive help for you. But unfortunately, as difficult as this one on Pandora is, it's the easiest out of the three by a country mile. You may be a heretic vault thief, but you fight like a psycho berserker, and that's a compliment. Here's your prize money, player. Your second circle of slaughter will be called the Cistern of Slaughter. You'll find this on Promethea in the Meridian Metroplex. Make your way out in a vehicle from Watershed Base. Take a left at the end. 
Go past the catch a ride point and then take a direct left, just opposite where the steps are that lead you into a group of enemies. Go down these sewers, just on your right, make your way up this corridor. Your system of slaughter travel point will be just at the end. Now, if you thought that the circle of slaughter on Pandora was difficult, you haven't seen anything yet. What you're going to fight here is damn near every single creature that you'd normally find across the galaxy. You've got Saurians, you've got Tyrants, you've got Jabbers, Ratch, Rack, uh, what else you got here? You've got Spider Ants, Skags. If it's a creature in Borderlands 3, you'll fight it here and every single version of that particular creature. You're going to need to use every trick in the book to make it through this one alive. Especially if you're playing it on solo. It's incredibly challenging. Now, bring the strongest incendiary weapons you've got. Again, I went for the Skexil. Weapons like the Liuda, although the majority of them that drop are actually incendiary. Where the magazine size isn't all that, they can't really lay down the damage as well as something with a higher magazine. Make sure as well that you've got either some Singularity or Homing Grenades. Because the rack later on in the levels, you've got badass rack you're going to be fighting against. And they take so much damage to actually drop. If they manage to down you and you're going to fight for your life, chances are you won't even damage them 10% before you've run out of fight for your life. And obviously you die, you have to start that particular round again. And obviously just like the Circle of Slaughter on Pandora, the higher you go through these rounds, the more difficult the enemies are going to become. I know that sounds a bit obvious. But try and take your time with it as best as you can. There's not really any cover points because essentially you need to get these enemies down. But try, as soon as they're bunched up together, unleash your most powerful area of effect attacks. But whatever way you choose to do the system of slaughter, you're going to have a rough time of it. Even with four of you in the lobby, it's still a challenge. Never mind trying to do this one on solo. The only reason I've done all three of these circles of slaughter solo is I heard a few people saying that it couldn't be done. So I just wanted to find out from my own point of view, and obviously to give you guys a better guide, if it can actually be done solo, if you're good enough to get through. Not bragging, not blowing my own trumpet, anything like that. It was literally just a quality control test to find out if it was possible to get through solo. And there was a few airy moments, especially on Promethea, but it was possible. Looks like you're the ferocious beast now. Hard to believe you cut through my entire flock like that. I guess I have no choice but to give you the reward money. You bastard! Next up, we've got Slaughterhouse 3000. Malawan gave Torg a dropship, and obviously he turned that into a bloody great arena. Now, there is a location on Necrotophio where you can go to to gain access to the Slaughterhouse 3000. Unfortunately, every time I've gone to this thing, I either can't interact with it, or when I can interact, it just doesn't seem to do anything. The location itself seems very heavily glitched to the point 
I'm not even going to bother including it in the guide as there's a much simpler way of gaining access to the Slaughterhouse 3000. What you want to do, either if you're in game, go to your pause menu, or if you've just gone past the title screen on your main menu, go to your social tab, then go to matchmaking, then select Slaughter Star 3000. You don't actually have to go into Slaughter Star 3000. It doesn't matter if a match isn't found. Simply by going to your matchmaking and selecting the Slaughter Star 3000, that will be enough to force the actual fast travel point into your fast travel menu in game. Now that you've managed to gain access to the Slaughter Star 3000, you're going to be fighting some very, very powerful Malawan enemies, which will culminate in an incredible battle I'll get to in a little while. Now waves 1 and 2 will consist of normal commanders, they'll consist of some heavies, nothing really much to worry about, you've been taking these guys down all game, so you should definitely know what to do to handle yourself in here. Rounds 3 and 4 things start getting quite difficult, that's when you get your badasses turning up, you get the null hounds, round 4 especially you've got some very heavily armoured, the arbalest enemies and stuff like that, they're quite tough to take down. Make sure that you've brought some very powerful corrosive weaponry with you for this one. I'd say it's Slaughter Star 3000 where you need to make sure that you've got your widest variety of elemental damage weaponry. You need the trifecta of weaponry here. You need to make sure it's essential to have shock, corrosive and incendiary. If you've got all three of those, you should be able to get your way to round four. Then it's just literally a case of clawing your way through each round. So you get to round five, and then hopefully you can make it through. Now, round five itself is kind of an insanity round, to be honest. You get mobbed with so many enemies, especially if you're doing it currently with this bloody Harvest DLC going on. The ghosts that come out, they're kind of a double-edged sword for me. On one hand, when you get terrified, obviously you lose accuracy, you lose your reload speed, you're shaking all over the place where you're so... Quotation scared. But on the other hand, they do come in incredibly handy to get yourself a second wind. So it's kind of, like I say, it's a double-edged sword for me, these ghosts. The Bloody Harvest DLC is due to end on the 5th of December 2019. So from the time of posting this video, we've only actually got a couple of weeks to worry about it. But obviously, it is still a factor currently. But anyway, enough about all that. Let's get back to round five. You're going to be mobbed with so many badass enemies. They're all very heavily shielded. Make your way through all of this. And then as a special treat, you get two incredibly powerful Malawan robots that thankfully are both weak to corrosive damage. They're about a good 150 foot tall. One of them comes out on the left side of the arena. The other one comes out on the right side of the arena. You have to fight them both at once. Fortunately, there's qu that tall kind of platform in the middle provided you keep your back towards it and you don't go off to the left or right of the arena you'll only really have to worry about the attacks from one rather than both of them now as soon as these large enemies appear don't play about get them dropped as soon as you can because they do unleash some very powerful attacks they've got one it seems to be like some sort of plasma rain that downed me a couple of times it was a bit of a pain to be honest there was nothing I could do about it. The tracking on some of these Malawan enemies' weapons are next level. It's almost like going up against Malawan version of the SAS. Once you've defeated the two big bads, you'll have a couple more enemies to deal with. Then thankfully, it'll be job done. Providing this is your last one, your trophy or achievement will unlock after you've turned the missions in.
And if this is your last one, congratulations on getting Slaughterhouse 3 done and out of the way. And don't feel bad if you start failing on this one. Simply go away, build up your Guardian rank, build up your weaponry, get some better gear. We've put over a hundred legendary loot guards up on Griffin's Gaming Guard so far, with a lot more to follow. So it should give you a very broad spectrum of where to actually farm the weapons from. So guys, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit the like button. Let me know down in the comment section how you're getting on with Slaughterhouse 3. If you need any further information or advice, let me know and I'll do my best to help you out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. After you subscribe, please hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future content. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.